Hey guys, and welcome back. So today we have the process of what it takes when your CP4 takes a crap. So everything gets replaced and everything that doesn't get replaced gets flushed. I'm just gonna do this in several parts because of course I can't just put the camera on and let it film because it would take a lot of hours. So I'm gonna flip it around and show you where I'm at so far. And then I'll go to the next stage and I'll show you where I'm at after I get that far. And then the third stage. So we got top, side, and rear. So hold on. And here's top. Injectors. Injector tubes, injection lines, and the fuel rail. They got to come out and get replaced. And then now I am going to move on down to the injection pump. But let me get back to something really quick. So this whole problem started when the customer comes in and he's got a check engine light. We pull the code and we end up with the injection timing performance code. And that's the only code. There's a whole lot of steps of trying to figure out what causes this code. But because of the problems that we've had with these CP4s, it gets a little bit simpler, I guess. So the injection timing performance is when the injectors aren't firing as they should. Now, I'm not going to go through and do fuel return tests like the procedure says because it's just it's a waste of time. I go to the common areas where you would expect debris to, to catch. So this one has had the CP4 recall, so it has a CP3 in it. In fact, the CP3 recall was done, I don't know, 18,000 miles ago. And this code started coming up ever since that recall was done. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I pull the FQS off of the injection pump and inspect for metal debris, but this FQS is different. It's different on the CP3 than it was on the CP4. CP4 is very easy to, to pull the FQS and see debris there. This one, I just show no, any debris in the FQS. So then I go to the fuel pressure sensor, the fuel rail pressure sensor, and I pulled it out. And on immediate inspection, I didn't find anything. But we know that the metal that starts flaking off inside of that CP4 is pretty small. So I grabbed a piece of white paper, clean white paper, and I tapped that fuel rail pressure sensor on it. And you could start to see some little tiny specks of metal coming out of it. And that resulted into what you guys are going to see here through this video. It's an entire fuel system replaced and flush. So all the high pressure stuff, it gets replaced. All the low pressure stuff gets flushed. The tank gets dropped, flushed out, and the lift pump replaced. Fuel filter housings get flushed out, filters get replaced, so on and so forth. Anyway, stay tuned. All right, so before I uh, flush this fuel filter housing, this is the engine mounted fuel filter housing. Let's see if you can see some of that metal down there in the bottom. You see those pieces? Some more smaller ones over there that's why we have to flush everything out so anyway got the injection pump out and some other lines off and all of that stuff there's where the injection pump goes there we'll uh, get the fuel tank out and proceed with flushing it and then flushing lines and start putting this thing back together alrighty so we got the fuel pump module out. What I'm going to try and get on here is down there you see all of that nasty stuff in the little screen in the pickup screen. Uh, we're going to end up flushing the tank right now. I've got it draining out. So we'll get the tank clean, the lines flushed, everything else, and then I'll start going back together with this thing. We'll get it all back together and uh, take it for a test drive, make sure that the injection timing performance code does not return, which it shouldn't if you replace, you know, $13,000 worth of parts or whatever it was. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to let this one go for now, but thank you for watching. 
you know, hit that like and comment if you feel the need and all that good stuff. So have a good one and talk to you later.